Yo, yo, yo. What's up, Diamond family? It's your man, Vivi, and welcome back to the VVS Academy. As you guys know, I'm here every week dropping off gems, teaching you to record, and make your music better. So if that sounds good to you, stick around. Look, man, I got a really crazy video for you guys today, and it's going to be pretty quick. I'm going to be showing you guys the three best mixing plugins that come stock with Pro Tools, right? So I'm going to show you the three that you need to use every single time to make sure that your songs come out professional and clean. Look, I'm not even going to over talk it, but if you're struggling and you don't have a template for recording in Pro Tools and getting that industry quality recording out of the way, check out my free template down below. It's going to completely change the game for you, handle all the complex routing and everything, and let you focus on just recording really good songs. Songs. All right, so that's all I got right now. Let's go ahead and play back the track and see where we're starting at. Let's get it. Then I'm alone in my room. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I stare at the wall. Don't know what to do. No, no. But I know I wanna ball. Yeah. I started checking my phone. Yeah. Noticed that I was alone. Yeah. Just got me out of my zone. Yeah. Now I'm in the club throwing one shade. Cool. So as you can hear, the song already sounds pretty good. Like it's balanced well, but obviously like it's not a finished song. It still sounds like a rough. So let me show you the three tools you need to use in Pro Tools to get this thing started and sounding really good. So the first one is going to be just the stock compressor that comes within Pro Tools. And I'm going to show you exactly how I like to use it for vocals. So I'm going to go to my music bus, um, or you can just put this directly on the beat channel and grab that um, compressor. Now that we've got that, we're going to go to the key input and set it to our parallel compression channel. Now, if you use one of my templates, all these things are already routed for you, so you don't have to worry about setting all this up. You just have to select where it should go. So we're also going to check, take this side chain right here and hit the key. Then we're going to dial in the settings. Let's get it. And I'm alone in my room, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I stare at the wall, don't know what to do, no, no. But I know I wanna ball, yeah. I started checking my phone, yeah. Noticed that I was alone, yeah. Just got me out of my zone, yeah. Now I'm in the club, no one wants to say it. Cool. So what are we doing with this? This side chain is basically turning the beat down just a little bit every time that the vocal hits so that the vocal never gets buried by the beat. It keeps the vocal very present and very in front. And so it makes it, you know, kind of concise and gives it that really professional upfront vocal sound that you're looking for. So make sure that you use the dynamic compressor that comes stock with Pro Tools. Now, the second tool that I love to use that comes standard with Pro Tools is just the D-verb. Right, so I already dialed in some settings. I'll walk you through what I dialed in, but let's go ahead and play it back. Hang on. All right, let's hear it. Then I'm alone in my room, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I stare at the wall, don't know what to do, no, no. But I know I wanna ball, yeah. I started checking my phone, yeah. Noticed that I was alone, yeah. Just got me out of my zone, yeah. Now I'm in the club, no one wanna say it. Cool, and so you notice we instantly got some ambience, some space, right? Let's let's bypass this or mute this channel and hear it back and forth. And I'm alone in my room, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I stare at the wall, don't know what to do, no, no. But I know I wanna ball, yeah. Right now, let's hear that same section with the reverb added. And I'm alone in my room, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I stare at the wall, don't know what to do, no, no. But I know I wanna ball. And it's almost like it compressed the vocal some without us having to use a compressor because it smoothed out the vocal a little bit just by pushing it back in the mix. So keep that in mind. Sometimes before you reach for your compressor, add some reverb and see if that kind of gives you the same feeling. There's really no rules, man. Work however you really want to work and however gets you the results that you're after. All right. So let me show you the settings I use for the D-verb. The first thing that you always want to mess with is the pre-delay. The pre-delay is basically a little bit of space to let your vocal come through before the reverb is applied. So if you have the pre-delay set to zero, you're going to get instant reverb. And sometimes that kind of buries the vocal or pushes it back a little bit more than you want it to. And so if you mess with the pre-delay, it'll give you a little bit of space for the vocal to come through clearly before the reverb is applied. All right, so make sure that you mess with the pre-delay and the decay time. These are the two big ones. The decay time is basically how long the reverb lasts. Right now I have it at two and a half seconds you can go as high or as low as you, as fits your song so you want to listen to your song and try to make the reverb fit you don't want it to hang too long or cut too short that it's too noticeable so make sure that you mess with these two knobs when you're dealing with the d-verb 
Now, the last thing that I want to show you guys for mixing in Pro Tools is one that's actually in the audio suite. Now, you can use this as a plugin, but I like to use it in the audio suite. And I'm going to show you how. First, I'm going to take my instrumental and highlight the section that I want to mess with. Now, the thing about this is you might be working with a two track. In this instance, I'm actually using the track outs for the, for the song, but it will work the same way. If there was just one beat here, you just highlight the section that you wanted. Then we're going to go up to our audio suite and choose harmonic and come down here to lo-fi. I like to bring the sample rate down to 48 and then just hit render. And now let's hear what it does to our track. And if you'll notice, it just gives you a little bit of like a filtered out, um, you know, the beat is coming through the wall kind of sound. Um, and if you really want to add some variation and some, you know, different, different textures and such to your tracks to keep them more interesting and more engaging, this is a great tool to do that. So again, to use it, all you have to do is go to the audio suite, go to harmonic and all the way down to lo-fi. And I just, I don't mess with the sample size and the anti-aliasing, I don't mess with anything else. I just simply decrease the sample rate. Now you can mess with these things if you want to, but I'll let you just mess with the sample rate real quick, hit render and we're done. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick little bonus. Um, if you're going into this, where you're about to kind of, you know, filter out the beat, I'm gonna show you guys a way to kind of make it a little bit smoother. So the first thing I like to do before I go into a, a filtered out beat section is a drop, right? But I know I wanna ball, yeah. I saw the check. And now if you want to smooth that out even further, we're gonna grab those just the very end of those audio files and we're gonna go up here to um pitch shift and we'll choose verify this time. And so now it's already set to slow down, we'll just hit render and now listen what it does to our track. So all it's doing really is just giving you um, a tape stop effect, right? So let's add this drop to the rest of our instruments because our guitar is still coming through, our vocal sampler is still coming through, and those are things we also didn't filter down. So maybe we'll go back and filter those as well. We'll see, but let's go ahead and slow down the rest of that as well, and let's hear it. Cool. I like that a lot. So now let's do one extra thing. Let's take it a step further. We're going to shorten our, um, we're going to tighten up our, our grid. I'm sorry. And so we'll drag this back to here. And what we'll do is we'll highlight these same sections again, just so that we can drag them back like that. And now it's going to give us a drop and a beach and a beach stomp as well. But I know I want to buy. Yeah, I started checking my phone. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's see if we can get it to give us two, though. So let's go like this. We'll grab these and we'll hit Command and D, and that'll just duplicate it. And then we can get two stomps. No, but I know I want to buy. Yeah, I started checking my phone. Yeah, and really, man, using just the stock tools that come with Pro Tools, you can get a really professional, industry quality sound every single time. These are the tips I'm giving you guys week in and week out. And if you need a little bit more help, drop me a line down below. My name is VV and I'm here for you. Stay humble and make diamonds only. Peace. No, but I know I wanna buy. Yeah, I started checking my phone. Yeah, noticed that I was alone. Yeah, just got me out of my zone. Yeah, now I'm in the club, no one wants to say it. A lot of people hate it. Now I'm in the club, no one.